Recently, a couple of pediatricians posted a warning that elderberry shouldn't be used in COVID-19 because a study they came across showed that it increased inflammatory cytokines in healthy people. The docs reasoned that as a result, using elderberry might trigger a dangerous cytokine storm. Cytokine storms being the ultimate cause of death in COVID-19 victims. This warning created quite an uproar as elder as tea syrup or tincture has a long history of use to improve symptoms in influenza and has a rather good amount of research supporting that use. So let's talk about cytokines, cytokine storms, and the use of herbs in viral pandemics, like the one SARS-CoV-2 is causing. Our immune system uses a large variety of compounds called cytokines in a very complicated feedback system to protect us. These cytokines include inflammatory compounds such as interleukin-6, interleukin-1, and tumor necrosis factor alpha. But they also include a group of cytokines called chemokines that attract and direct other cells. Rantes is a chemokine that's been shown to be very important in COVID-19. Another name for Rantes is CCL5. Our immune systems are actually very adept at using these cytokines and chemokines to protect us from foreign invaders, be the viruses or bacteria. And they do this by mounting a quick inflammatory response using varying amounts of different cytokines for different invaders and amounts of which change over the course of the battle. Cytokines are also used to quiet inflammation and restore balance once an invasion has been dealt with. As in any battle, there is collateral damage from our inflammatory immune response. Thus, in a cold, almost all of our cold symptoms, from that scratchy throat to the runny nose, are actually caused by the inflammatory cytokines released to fend off the cold. In flu, as well, Virtually all of those very uncomfortable flu symptoms are triggered by the flood of cytokines released in our body. So during, say, a usual seasonal flu, our body will quickly release inflammatory cytokines that cause fever, aches, pains, and more. Symptoms that dissipate once the flu virus yields to our immune system, typically about a week later. Occasionally, however, we'll encounter a new virus, and that can trigger an overreaction by our immune system, which basically spins out of control producing huge amounts of these inflammatory cytokines. This can actually also happen to individuals who due to chronic illness or a long life filled with inflammatory eating and inflammatory lifestyle habits enters flu season very inflamed. The strong reaction to the seasonal flu then adds to that existing inflammation and puts those people over the top, so to speak. 
These high levels of cytokines cause extreme fevers, pneumonia, tissue damage, shut down organs, and cause death. The strong inflammatory reaction to, say, bird flu or the 1918 flu compared to the reaction to a seasonal flu is what causes the big problem. In one, the strong immune reaction leads to death. In another, a more moderate immune reaction simply causes an uncomfortable but short-lived illness. Drug companies working on developing antiviral drugs often target the inflammatory cytokines. They know that if they can reduce these inflammatory cytokines, symptoms will lessen, the illness will pass more quickly, and death will be far, far less common. They know that the sharp rise in inflammatory cytokines is excessive and not helpful to the immune system's ability to fight off the illness. People working on avoiding colds, the flu, or difficult virus like SARS-CoV-2 often choose herbs and products to boost their immune system hoping that they will help them fight off the virus. These herbs, such as elderberry, echinacea, etc., are marketed as immune system boosters. Fortunately, though, they don't boost the immune system in a sick person. If they did, their immune system would produce more inflammatory cytokines triggering a higher fever, a scratch to your throat, a worse cough, a worse illness. So what we need is not an immune boost, but something to moderate and tone down our immune system. In fact, a recent study on patients with COVID-19 noted that people overexpress many inflammatory cytokines in that illness, and the study concluded that the deaths seen in COVID-19 aren't really due to a massive replication of the virus, but instead are due to the dysregulated out-of-control immune response to that virus. What is needed in COVID-19 and most viral infections is a thoughtful toning down of the immune system's overreaction. And while herbs, unfortunately, aren't well studied, we do have a study that shows that echinacea actually reduces the production of inflammatory cytokines in a cell infected with a cold virus. The benefit people claim to gain when they take echinacea for a cold is not caused by an immune boost. Instead, cold symptoms are lessened as the production of inflammatory cytokines is toned down a bit. Another study found that echinacea also reduces the production of inflammatory cytokines like tumor necrosis factor alpha in cells infected with a flu. Bone set, an herb with a documented historical use in influenza that goes back hundreds of years, was shown not to boost or activate the immune system, but to instead reduce the production of inflammatory cytokines. 
A study on traditional Chinese herbs on the chemokine rantis in influenza showed some herbs dramatically reducing the production of rantis down to levels found in healthy cells, but all of the tested herbs reduced rantis to some degree. So, given the lack of good really well-designed research on herbs and the complexity of the immune response to novel and very complex viruses, how do we decide what to do next? If we are wise, our first step should be prevention. If we consistently eat an anti-inflammatory diet, Avoiding sugars, chemicals, refined grains, and such, our immune system will function better, and we are more likely to be able to fight off the virus before we even know it was on its way into our body. We can wash our hands well and keep our hands away from our face as well. Many of us are deficient in vitamin D3, and we know that adequate vitamin D can help us avoid catching a virus. As well, we should quit reaching for supplements and herbs to boost our immune system and prevent illness unless prescribed by a knowledgeable healthcare provider. These medicines shouldn't be used as preventatives. They should be stored for use only if we actually get sick. Consider this. Echinacea quiets the production of inflammatory cytokines in cells infected with a cold or flu virus. But in a healthy cell, Echinacea increases inflammatory cytokines. Why would you want to take an herb that will increase cytokines that can cause symptoms like fever, aches, or pains? Similarly, the nonsensical warning that elderberry syrup shouldn't be used in cases of the coronavirus is wrong. It was based on the fact that elder increased the production of inflammatory cytokines in healthy people. Astragalus, the reduced rantes in cells infected with the flu, also increased inflammatory cytokines in health. Basically, medicinal herbs are meant to be used when we are sick and shouldn't be used to ward off an illness we don't yet have. Instead of taking herbs to prevent an illness, prepare. If you get sick and medical care isn't available, what will you do? Is there something that you could take to ease a dry cough or reduce a fever. What if, as we are seeing in people getting COVID-19, you experience other novel symptoms? What will you do? How are you going to help your immune system cope with a new virus? First, work on getting some good advice. Don't listen to ads for products or buy into the stories about undocumented remedies used by someone somewhere, sometime, or what someone just read somewhere. If instead you're attracted to Eastern herbs, locate a well-trained TCM practitioner with a good education and lots of experience. I personally am drawn to Western herbs and discovered that medical doctors had treated 
early pandemic influenza back in 1918 with herbs and had explained the symptoms they used the herbs for and how they dosed them. That information is compiled in my book on pandemic herbs. So if Western herbs appeal to you as well, take a look at that book. Ultimately though, remember, it really is true that food is our best medicine. So do make the effort to quit eating inflammatory processed foods. Your body will be so glad if you do, and it will really make a big difference to your overall health.